Hey guys, welcome back to Out of Work Outdoors. My name is Connery, and today we're going to be covering bass fishing. As part of our Fishing Explained 2021, we're going to be covering stripers, bass, white bass, and maybe a couple other things. But bass is definitely on the series. Today we're going to be covering largemouth, smallmouth, spotted bass, and how we use these to win a second place and a sixth place finish in the Oklahoma Kayak Anglers January online tournament. Fish is this? It's on a jig. You better be a bass. A little big water bottle, dude. Big water bottle, dude. Told you there's a fish down there. Come on, 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 come on. Ooh, what's that, son? What's that? Holy shit! What? 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 Jig, bro. Alright guys, welcome back. Uh, this is what we used in January. And it's going to apply in February as well. January and February to me are pretty much the, the dead of winter. There's not a lot of activity. So you're going to use a lot of stuff that moves really, real slow. Especially for, for bass. Okay, so what we're going to talk about is uh, the baits and when and where and how I did this in the month of January. And if I was going to do it again in February, I wouldn't change a thing. Okay, so this is a January slash February uh, attack on the, on, the, on the bass. So what we're doing is uh, online events. We we have a whole month to uh, to catch as many fish as we can. But realistically, you only want to you only really want to target the biggest fish because you only count the top five. So a lot of little stuff I'm gonna not gonna talk about. I'm only talk about how I did it and how my brother did it. Okay. So when you're talking about bass fishing in wintertime, it's real cold. There's not a lot of activity. Bass either go real deep or they have to find some type of uh, grass recover real shallow. So let's let's go over the baits first. The baits are gonna be these are the three I caught my top five on. Okay, there's an A rig, a drop shot, and a G. Okay, so let's go over the A rig first. This is the A rig that I use. I personally use. It's built by our team member Hybrid Killer. If you look at it from afar, it looks like a regular A rig, but if you look at it really close, you can tell it's not your typical A-Rig at all. Construction's different. Um, it's constructed out of fluorocarbon. So you can see it here, but when you drop it in the water, the arms disappear. And all you have is an actual legit looking bait ball now. And it's still castable. But how I've been doing it is I've been dropping them down to fish. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. But uh, this A-Rig we're currently building. You know, if you want one, you can't really buy it anywhere else. You're going to have to contact us, and we'll, we're still trying to price out exactly how much. But, you know, contact us, and we'll, we'll let you know. If you want it shipped, we'll let you know about that, too. But basically, it's a, it's a castable, clear umbrella rig. And it's got hooks on it. These are weightless. All four of these are weightless. As you can see, I'm playing with flies also. And on the bottom is where all your weight's at. This is a three-quarter ounce uh, Berkley underspin. And as you can see, different color on the bottom, but on top, almost the same thing, along with these little blades on it. And, of course, we're running Kytex 2.0, no, 3.3s and 3.8s. It seems to be the money. I mean, you could also do that 2.8s also. But typically, this, this, that's how this rig likes it, the lighter ones. So, so when I'm fishing the A-Rig, and how my brother's been fishing it is, we're targeting the fish that are pretty deep. Uh, you go over where you're going to fish. You, one thing is 
important, you know, you have to find your main lake rock points. Main lake rock is where you want to go. And basically, we're throwing this area out. We're balancing the bottom. Okay, we're balancing the bottom quite a bit. And that's how we're getting bit. Either that, or if you can go over some areas that are super deep, and you can find them suspended, say, say they're over Stop, 60 bro, foot of water. Uh, it, well, say you're over 60 foot of water depth, and they're 45 feet down, you can drop the rig to them. Okay, bro, and sometimes you, they'll buy it. As in the video. I'll, I'll demonstrate. <laughs> I've actually caught, captured some video on that. Um, the other one, other way to do this is the drop shot. Let me show you the drop shot. So this is not your typical drop shot. This is like a beast, one beast, beast setup. That's what I'm trying to say. So drop shot, take a spinning rod. You want to tack on a half ounce. It doesn't matter if it's tungsten or not. This one just happens to be tungsten. And then you want, you go anywhere from a foot and a half to three foot. I think I remember catching that one out of th using a three foot leader and then a another two foot from that you put a little swivel on there because when you're dropping these things 40 feet down they you have to reel them up so you can drop them again there's a lot of line twists but the magic here is this little setup right here i think this is where the magic is uh this lure is not your typical fluke and yeah it's a full size four and a half inch fluke but it's from z-man so this guy whether you're holding the line tension tight or not, it naturally wants to, to just float like this in the water. It just naturally wants to float. So when you're when you're dropping it to the floor, it literally goes to the floor and it just stays above the floor the whole time. And you just you don't even have to twitch it much. Drop it down there, just let it sit. It'll do its thing, especially if it's a little current. It'll do its thing and then pull it right back up. So we caught we caught a big one on this. So that's my drop shot setup. Uh, the hook is a 2 aught Nico. Uh, it's a VMC Nico hook. It's a VMC Finesse. The one that has a little uh, wire keeper right here. Okay. And like I said, uh, another foot up or two foot up is a Spro little 30 pound or 50 pound swivel. And that's that's a drop shot setup. I mean, it's a, it's a beefy setup. We're dropping these 25, 50 foot. Okay. So that's, that's the magic on the drop shot. And once it gets down there, this thing don't move. It's not like I'm dragging it too, too crazy. Uh, in the video, you'll see me dragging it quite aggressive. But for the most part, throw it down there, just let it sit. Look at this, buddy. Drag it a little bit. Look at let it this. sit. And oh. that's how you go. Oh, yeah. 10 pound line, too. We're not doing any six or eight. This is 10 pound foreign carbon. Uh, the other one is this one. This is a, last but not least, this is a half ounce or three quarter. This is a three quarter, depending on how deep you want to fish it. But this is a three quarter ounce tungsten jig with a, I mean, it's it's green pumpkin, okay? It's all green pumpkin. As you can see, it's all green pumpkin. Football jig. Tungsten, because we're so far down deep. Trim the weed guard halfway back. And of course, on a tungsten jig, if you're going to go down that far with fluorocarbon or mono, this hook is actually pretty important. You want a more finer hook. Basco. Medium, <laughs> medium I hook. Feel, you don't want nothing big. Because when you set oh, the hook on something so deep, you're just not going to get any type of penetration on the fish. And of course, that's crawl. A this one, that's a pack of crawl, pack of slim. <sighs> and I bought that's it like with the pictures already right died. Which are Come stop like that. That's a cool thing. So this is basically my favorite <laughs> jig, jig setup ever for any offshore. Type thing. All right. You can feel the rocks pretty good and pretty nice much throw this in uh, rocks. So, so that's how I caught them with those three baits all month long. I brought a whole bunch of this stuff too, but these were the three that, that delivered, right? I caught 103.75 inches in the month of January. Um, all on these three, okay? Bunch of other fish on other stuff too, but the big ones, the big ones came on these three. So uh, where was where, where, where was I looking for them, right? So I would always start on main lake rocks. Find main lake rocks. Find where the shad are at. If you can, majority of the shad where I was seeing, they were real deep. But once in a while, you'll find one group or a batch of them that just kind of broke off. They kind of went shallow. So I'll give you an example. Uh, one day we found, we found shad deep. They were 60, 75 foot deep. And one day we just happened to find a batch of about 35 foot of water. Don't know why they're there, but we caught a lot of fish that day. 
So kind of look for that. Look for that group of shad that's kind of broken off from the main group of the other shad. Okay. So we were focusing on main lake rock points, flats, whatever you want. You know, fine. But it's got to have rock on it. And they're deep. Um, shallowest big fish I caught was out of 30 foot of water. And they're deep. And we caught many suspended using 2D sonar. Okay. So this is a time when 2D sonar. Well, this is the time when you got to learn electronics. That 2D sonar is going to come in very handy. If you have pan optics, even better. The majority of the people won't. So learn your 2D, learn how to you know drop on people, learn how your 2D cone works, uh, learn what colors mean. So if you guys want to learn more about that, let me know in the comments and I'll do a, a, an entire session on basically just 2D sonar. Uh, all right. And the other, the other, uh, um, the other thing is, if your grass has lake, only if your lake has grass, okay, they might be in the Ooh. grass too. Grass is king yeah, all year round. It's just real hard to find these little isolated clumps at times because you can have an entire school of fish living in grass, and they do all year round. But you have to find the green grass. The majority of the grass right now is dying or dead. But if you can find green grass, that's always good. And for something like that, once again, you can still throw all these all these things in there swim a jig uh or just crawl it through there you might want a different type of jig you definitely throw a drop shot in there text pose it now and throw an a ring weightless over the grass okay so you can still do that but that's not how i did it but we were on a couple of different lakes doing that too okay trying to find them didn't find it okay but but that's that's what that's how fishing is okay and when and where okay so uh, if you if you encounter a warming trend, that's a big deal. On a warming trend day, so say you get three, four warming trends, on the fourth day they might bite the whole day. Okay, they might, and we've seen that before. Where they just you just get a bite every hour for the whole day, and they're all good size. But for the most part, you're gonna get a morning bite, and then it's dead the whole day, and it starts biting again from two to six. Majority of activities right around right around six. So try to put a lot of focus on the afternoon bite. Typically, that's where it's at, the afternoon bite. And if you're good with your 2D sonar, you can tell when they're active and when they're not active. Uh, when you're seeing arches all over around 6, that's when you know all the fish is active. Bass, white bass, drums, catfish, they're all active, you know. But for the most part, the reason why I believe the 2 to 6 is, once again, on a typical day, say bluebird day, uh, is what you're going to get because it's so cold most of you, most of you guys are not going to want to go out there anyways so you're waiting for like a nice day to go out and you're a fair weather fisherman okay and that's typically what you're going to be doing in winter time it's so cold so if weather is fair you go out it takes a long time for the water to warm up one degree or two degrees in the winter time and when they do that is go time for the fish so can you imagine the water gets its hottest right around two and then it kind of tapers off towards six. When six o'clock hits, the sun goes down. It's like a light switch. They shut off the fish. At least that's what I've experienced. And that's it. I mean, that's bass fishing in uh, in January and February. So some people are going to ask, what about the jerk bait, right? For the for the most part, the jerk bait does not play right now because the fish are so deep. The jerk bait can't get down to them efficiently. So if you're going to throw a jerkbait, I'd rather throw an A-ray with a, with a quarter ounce head on it, how I set up, or you could just do a drop shot and drop it right down. A lot of people say, what about the Demiki rig? Well, I've thought about that. Demiki rig is a, is basically an A-rig just held over the fish. So that's what I've done, an A-rig. The jig, can you go bigger than a half ounce? Yeah, one ounce, one and a half ounce. And what about scent? Scent's a good thing to try right now. I just didn't do it the whole month, but it is a good time to, to, to put scent because the way I was getting my bites was I was just, I throw it out there, 25, 35 foot of water, and I didn't see suspended fish, okay, I just saw rocks. Throw it out there, just kind of wiggle the line, kind of wiggle the line, nothing, wiggle a little bit harder, and then you'll, you'll feel it move a little bit, and then you just roll up the slack and just shake it again. That's all I was doing for like hours, and then I'd stop. And then I go again. 
you don't even feel the bite on the jig. Uh, there is no thump on the jig. It's just, mm, that don't feel right. You roll up the slack, that don't feel right again. And he's got it already. And you just swing him hard. And, and that's the jig bite. That's typically what the jig's going to feel like for me this time of year anyways. So hopefully you guys learned something. You know, we caught plenty of large mouths, plenty of small mouths, and plenty of spotted bass too in this. Uh, everything from like three, four pounders. We weighed one that was probably seven pounds with a with a unit that was reading low. So uh, yeah, that's hopefully that helps you guys. You know. So anyways, uh, all these baits links in the video description. You can go you know easily click on it, go buy it. Um, when and where that's on you. This is assuming you have clear water. If it's not clear. You go shallow. If it's less than a foot of clarity, you stay less than 10 feet. But even at 10 feet, there's still going to be areas that are going to be considered deep for 10 feet. And they'll, they'll have a structure recover on it. And that's where the bass is going to be at. All right? So just kind of focus on that. You're going to have to fish deeper than what you traditionally fish. So anyways, that's what I got going for month of uh, January and February. Uh, and like I said, we're going to do one of these. For stripers, we're gonna do one for bass and one for maybe electronics every month until whenever, right? So you want to subscribe to the channel because we're gonna be talking about a lot of stuff. We're gonna in March it's pre-spawn, so you already know it's gonna be a jerk bait. And then in April, you already know that's bed fishing. We got a lot of bed fishing secrets we gotta let go. Summertime it's all about that top water jackhammer type stuff, open water, small swim baits, everything like that. And we're going to go full circle. So we're going to start talking about how to break down uh, lakes, how we break down lakes, um, how how we went to Texoma last year during the championship. Not a day of practice, and we both came out with top tens. So that's something that we will break down as the year progresses. So, you know, you want to subscribe, Don. You do want to subscribe just for that because I don't know when those videos are coming out. So you, you want to be notified when those videos come out. So well, that way you don't miss anything. On top of that, if you're a bass guy, we got a lot of tournament stuff coming up. So we're going to be hitting the tournament trails. Uh, we'll show you guys how we rig things, how the truck's rigged, how, you know, the whole the whole system that we got going. So any questions, let me know in the comments. And, uh, yeah, that's it. We'll let you guys know the next one. All right, guys. See ya. Connery from Out of Work. Good job. On the secret lure too. Good job. That's a giant, bro. Yeah, let it go. It need to go down deep. It goes deep. It goes deep. All the way down to bikini bottom. Bikini bottom. <laughs>